Hello, I hope you're doing well today. Welcome back to Scale Skills Preparatory Level. This is lesson eight. We're covering page nine in the book today, B flat major. All right, so in our previous lesson, lesson seven, we covered F major on page eight. And we learned that F major has one flat in the key signature. B flat major has two flats. So the previous flat from F major, which was B flat, is going to carry over into B flat major and our new flat is E flat. So B flat and E flat are our two flats in the key of B flat major. So at the top of the page, we're gonna start with our five finger position and one chord. So let's look at the right hand first. So we're going to take our thumb in the right hand and we're gonna start on B, but since the key signature has a B flat, we're actually gonna start on B flat. And this is the B flat right below middle C. Now, the other thing I like to do is outline the, the uh, five uh, notes in the five finger position before we play them. So the other flat is also going to take place in these five notes, and that is the E flat. So you want your second finger on C, your third finger on D, and your fourth finger you want to move it up to this black key right here, which is E flat. And then keep your fifth finger over on the F. So this is our five finger position. So starting on B flat, let's just go through these notes up and down, uh, nice and slow and even. So B flat, two on C, three on D, four on E flat, five on F. And then back down to E flat, D, C, and then in measure three, we're gonna end with the B flat. And then in the last measure, we have our one chord, which is the B flat chord. B flat being the first note of the scale. So our chord is B flat, D, and F. Our first note is Y, uh, the B flat is Y. It's a one chord because it's the first note of the scale. So the B flat chord, once again, is B flat, with your thumb, third finger on D, and your fifth finger on F. Let's jump down to the left hand now. So the left hand is going to be one octave lower, so your fifth finger is going to be on this B flat. Your four is on C, your three is on D, and your second finger is on E flat, and then your thumb on F. So that's your five finger position for B flat in your left hand. So let's go through these notes as well, starting with five on B flat, four on C, three on D, two on E flat, thumb on F, go back to E flat, three on D, four on F, and in the third measure, we end with five on the B flat. And again, in our last measure, the B flat chord, same notes, but in the left hand, it's your fifth finger on B flat, third finger D, and your thumb on F. All right, now let's put the hands together. So make sure you've got your outline, your thumbs are on B flat, your second finger in the left hand and your fourth finger in the right hand are on E flat, and then we're good to go. So here we go, B flats, C, D, E flat, F, back to E flat, D, C and B flat. And in our last measure, we have the B flat chord. So make sure it's all lined up. You want both chords, all six notes to sound as one. So when you got it lined up and you're ready to go, come down together. And just like that, you want a clear sound. So if one hand happens to sound before the other hand like this, or you get some notes that are rolled, or whatever note doesn't come in with the others, you wanna practice that. So all six notes come together at the same time. Now I definitely bend my third fingers probably more than any other. So we always remember the rule, it's like you want to approach the piano like you're holding a ball, or a bubble is a better example because if you hold a ball, you can get real tight, but with a bubble, if you get tight, you're gonna pop it, and you don't wanna be tight. But you do want those curved fingers, so for this B flat chord, it really helps, especially with the third fingers. 
and even a little bit with your pinkies and not so much with the thumbs they kind of you're kind of playing on the side of the thumbs but uh, you definitely don't want to be flat fingered here in that third uh, yeah flat fingers in both hands but that third finger really will help a lot and the pinkies too of course and arching the wrist just a little bit so if you find that one hand is playing in before the other or you're not just getting an evenness in the sound it could be your your fingers are a little flat so you might want to look at that and curve them a little bit more and as you play through this five finger position don't worry about going fast i don't even worry about the rhythms yes it says quarter notes and a dotted half note and all that i'm not even worry about that what is important here is just playing evenly so you definitely want the steady beat and you want to make sure both hands are playing at the same time uh, I like to play it more on the loud side because I'm really learning it that way and I'm really engaging my fingers. Uh, if you play it on the soft side, that's fine too. In fact, that would be a nice goal. But certainly in the beginning, um, you might find that a little challenging because playing softer when you're first learning something, I, I think is always harder. So playing louder um, is probably your best bet as you go through this exercise. Let's look at the scale now, the tetrachord form. So remember the tetrachord form in this book is when we take one octave of a B flat scale. So we're going to be starting on this B flat here and ending on this B flat right below middle C, but we're going to split it between the hands. So first we're going to start with the left hand. Your fifth finger is on B flat. And this is really no different than what we just did in the five finger position, except when you get to the F, which is the first note of the second measure, Notice above that F it says RH, that's your right hand, and the one is your thumb. So your right hand is going to take over here. Now the difference is, um, in the previous lesson, F major, and some of the other lessons before that in this book, I think we never used um, the thumbs in both hands. So this is the first time that the right hand is actually going to start using that thumb. Now there is a reason for this. When you play an entire octave with one hand, which we don't do in this book, um, at least I don't think we will, um, but uh, in the later levels for sure, you will actually be using a fingering in the right hand that requires your thumb on this F. So I won't get into more of that right now. That'll be at a later uh, level. But um, this is kind of prepping you for that. So just keep in mind that it's not two on F like our previous uh, lessons, but it's thumb on F. And so that means you're going to use two on G, three on A, and four on B flat. So you won't be using your fifth finger. Okay, so once you've got this lined up, make sure your thumb's out of the way. And your thumb in the right hand is on F. Your fourth finger in the right hand is on B flat. And of course, your starting note's five on B flat. So now you've got the position, and just like the five finger position above it, go nice and slow, loud, and even. So here we go. We got B flat, C, D, E flat, and then the right hand, F, G, A, B flat. Next measure, we're coming back down. A, G, F, switch to the left hand, E flat, D, C, B flat and that's all it is so a big part of that scale that tetrachord form is already having your fingers lined up not just in a round of you know a, a uh, roundabout position but an exact precise position which includes having five on B flat two on E flat in your left hand thumb out of the way in the left hand and then thumb on the F in the right hand and four on that B flat so once you're already there, it's going to make it a lot easier to play. Let's go down to the chord progression, root position in the first two measures. So just remember root position is when you don't, you're not using any inversions. These chords are built off of that root note. Underneath these two measures, you see the Roman numerals. The first one is Roman numeral one. So that is the one chord, which we already played at the end of the first line. We already talked about the one chord is the B flat chord because a one chord is built off the first note of our scale and the first note is B flat. And of course, chords are built of thirds. So let's do this in both hands. Since we've already been playing with both hands now, you're gonna have B flats. So that's five in the left hand, thumb in the right hand. Third finger on D's in both hands, 
and thumb in the left hand, pinky in the right hand on F. So all together with both hands, nice and strong. Again, curve your fingers. You want one clean sound. So this is a review at this point because you've already done this with both hands. Again, at the end of the first line at the top of the page. Now we're going to jump up to the five chord. The fifth note in the scale is F. So the, in an F chord is F, A, and C. Again, this is root position, F's at the bottom. And it's the exact same fingering that you just used on the B flat chords. Five and one, three and three, one and five, okay? So the hardest thing really about this is, like all the previous lessons, is the jump. Jumping from B flat up to F, and then back to B flat for our second measure. So have a locked hand position when you do this. Locked meaning watch my hands as I move. I'm not shifting anything. I'm keeping them still curved. The fingers are still curved and I'm not expanding the fingers or contracting them. It's the exact same position. And notice when I come from the F, I'm really leaning into this B flat. So I'm not coming over to the keys, but I'm kind of coming up and over because that B flat is further up on the keyboard, okay? So again, don't worry about rhythm. Take your time. Even if you have to move the hands, line it up, maybe even lightly play the notes and then come down. So it's better to have it perfectly lined up and then play and have a good sound. So there's no rushing here with rhythm. The next two measures is the common tone. So this uses an inversion. You're going to start and end on the B flat one chord in root position, but you're going to a five, seven. You, you went to a five earlier in the root position. So remember a five chord is the F chord in B flat major, F, A, and C. And a five seven takes a note, seven notes up from the root note of this chord. So not seven notes up from B flat, not the seventh note of the B flat scale, seven notes up from the root note of the five seven chord, which is F. Now F counts as number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, here's my F chord. I'm going to adjust my fingering in both hands. And there's my F seven, almost. We missed one little thing here. Look at the seventh note. It's an E, but our key signature is an E flat. So this is the F seven chord. Now I'm playing it in root position and I'm using four notes, which is not the case for the first inversion. There's only three notes and it's not root position. So we're going to use the common tone. So remember common tone means the same note that was in or notes that was in the previous chord. The previous chord, let's go back is B flat. Is there a note in this chord that's in the F seven chord? Is there a B flat? No, it was F A C E flat. Is there a D? Again, no, F, A, C, and E flat were our notes. F, yes, F was the first note of that chord. So this is the common tone. B flat chord, I'm gonna stay on this F, and I'm going to go to an A and an E flat like this. It's a little tricky. Notice the fingering in the left hand, five on A, two on E flat, thumb on F in the right hand, thumb on A, four on a, uh, E flat, five on F. Now, the note that we're not playing is a C. The reason for that is the rule, as I've said in previous lessons, is you can leave out the fifth. The fifth has little importance in a chord. So going back to the F7 root position, the F's important because it's an F chord. The A's important because it dictates if it's a minor or major chord. The E flat's important because that's the seventh, so that makes it a seventh. The C is the fifth, and it really doesn't have much importance. So if I leave it out, 
It takes away a little bit of the color, but it creates a nice open sound, which is very desirable, actually. So going back here, remember the F is the common note. So you want to practice, and your two and four could or should be lined up already on the E flat. So it's your fifth finger in the left hand, thumb in the right hand. And you really want to make sure it gets to that A. And then, of course, in the last measure, you're coming right back. So that is the common tone chord progression, the one chord to a first inversion of the five, seven, and then back to one. So the reason it's first inversion is because I'm gonna stay in this octave down here. Here it is again in root position. The F's at the bottom, that's why it's root. If I take the F and throw it at the top, keep the other three notes the same. So I'm gonna take away the F, Keep the A, C, E flat, F, put it up here. That's first inversion. I've inverted it once. And of course I can leave out the fifth and that doesn't change anything. It's still first inversion. All right, so that takes care of the chord progression. And lastly, we have the arpeggio. The arpeggio is the one chord, the B flat chord in both hands. Same fingering, same hand position. So in the first two measures, you are playing the B flat chord in your left hand, but broken followed by the right hand. So that is a broken chord, but what makes an arpeggio is when you start going into another octave. So in measure three, you're gonna take your second finger in the left hand, bring it to that B flat. And then on uh, beat two, you're gonna continue with five on F, right there in the, left, in the right hand. So your right hand doesn't need to go anywhere. In measure two, the last note you played was five on F, cross to two in the next measure on B flat, and you're gonna go right back to that five on F, three on D, and the next measure, thumb on B flat, and then you need to have your left hand already back in the B flat position for one on F, three on D, five on B flat. So again, it's no different than all the previous lessons where we've done arpeggios. Same fingering, same pattern. Um, the only difference is now you're incorporating this, this B flat, which feels a little different, so it could be a little more challenging. So one more time, always remember that what you wanna to try to do is be moving that left hand during that second measure, so it's right there in the third measure. Same thing as you're going back down. So that you know takes a little practice, but you should at this point have, uh, not mastered, but you know should have a pretty good idea of doing that if you've practiced. Again, if you wait to the very last moment, see, see what happened? And I'm not exaggerating, that really happened. I aimed for the B flat and it was too late and I slid right off. I have very little control. So you definitely wanna take advantage of when one hand's moving and during that time be moving, in this case, your left hand. All right, so that covers the lesson. B flat major, two flats. You wanna memorize it. B flat and E flat are in the key of B flat major. All right, uh, so spend some time, of course, on this. And uh, like I said, play out. Don't worry about any of the rhythms. Just even this is good. So you do want them to be steady quarter notes, but they could be steady half notes if you want. It could be steady eighth notes if you're ready to go faster. Steadiness is the key. Uh, loud is good when you're learning this if you want to master it doing uh, soft. That's quite nice, especially for arpeggios. Soft arpeggios are quite, quite lovely. And uh, that basically, that covers it. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.